Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Ruz Beshad. This is the 12th part of the series on how to develop a software application and the third part of creating a pagination component. As I promised earlier, in this video, I'll show you how to connect to the JavaScript runtime and use JS functions in a Blazor WebAssembly application. Such a feature can take your Blazor app to the next level and give it exceptional functionality. But at the same time, you should be careful about using JavaScript code directly in your Blazor app, as it may interfere with the Blazor runtime when manipulating HTML DOM. So are you ready? Let's get started. Well, in this video, I'm going to use the RCL project, which is our Blazor component library for the JS intro. So let's expand the northwind.ui.components project and then expand the www root folder. You'll see the example JS intro.js file. This file along with another file of the same name ending with CS extension will form the foundation of JS intro in our solution. If you remember from my previous video, organize your reusable Razor components using RCL the first file is a JavaScript module containing a sample function that can be called from .NET code. Note that the function is marked with the export keyword so that it can be imported to and used in .NET code. The second file is a c -sharp class containing .NET code that shows how to call that function defined in the JavaScript module. Notice how the JavaScript function is called from .NET code. We have to pass the name of the JavaScript function as the first parameter and then its arguments as the next parameters to the module.invoke async method. As the first step, let's rename these files to something more meaningful like JSintrop helper. You may remember from the previous video that we reached the point to enable or disable the navigation buttons. So as the second step, let's create our first JavaScript function named enable nav button, which will be responsible for this goal. This function gets the HTML DOM element as the first and the boolean value named enable as the second parameter. To implement it, let's write the following code in the body. This piece of code is clear and speaks for itself, but it's not enough. We have to add some more stuff to complete it, and I'll tell you why. If you go to the Bootstrap Pagination page and have a look at the Disabled and Active State section, you'll find this description. Pagination links are customizable for different circumstances. Use disabled for links that appear unclickable and active to indicate the current page. While the disabled class uses pointer events none to try to disable the link functionality of anchors, that CSS property is not yet standardized and doesn't account for keyboard navigation. As such, you should always add tab index equals minus one 
on disabled links and use custom JavaScript to fully disable their functionality. So, just adding the disabled class to the element is not enough, and we also need to add the tab index attribute with a minus one value to the child anchor element. Go back to the function and complete it this way. We also need another JavaScript function to set an HTML input control to a specific value. So, let's add it as follows. Alright, the JavaScript part is done, now it's turn of the .NET side. Go to the JS Intrap Helper class. We need to create c -sharp methods in which we can invoke those JavaScript functions. To do this, simply borrow code from this sample code and make the necessary changes as follows. You may notice that there's a difference between the two methods. The latter one doesn't return a value, so instead of module.invoke-async method, we have used module.invoke-void-async. Because of this change, we also used value task instead of value task string as the return type for the method. Also note that an HTML element in Blazor is represented by the element reference type. Okay, let's create the second C sharp method. Note that we've defined this method in a generic form because we may want to use it with different types, such as int, string, and so on. Okay, code and methods are ready to use, but how can we use them? We have to create an instance of this class everywhere and each time we need to call its methods. Also note that we need to have access to the JS runtime object to pass it to the constructor of this class, and it's not that straightforward. There may be different ways to solve this problem, but I'd like to use the dependence injection for that. Let's see how to do that. Go to the program class in the northwind.web project. First, 
we need to get the JS runtime from the service collection of the WebAssembly host instance as follows. Second, we need to register the JS Runtime service with the dependency injection container. So, add the following code. Third, Go to the pagination component and inject an instance of JS Introp helper into it at the top this way. To have access to the navigation buttons plus the input controls easily from the code behind, Let's add a ref directive attribute to each HTML tag as follows. The ref directive attribute is used to capture a component reference in Blazor. When we require a reference to an HTML element or Blazor component, we should decorate it with ref. Now in the code behind, we need to declare members with the same identifiers of type element reference. So the underscore page first variable for example, points to the li element in the HTML markup which is decorated by ref directive attribute with a value of underscore page first. Now the facilities are easily accessible. Go to the on page change event handler and replace this comment with the following code. Do the similar action for the on-page size change event handler. But be careful. This is not accurate and needs some correction as follows. And finally, update the enable or disable navigation buttons method with the following code. Now, let's test the latest changes.
Note that yet we haven't written code to get data for a given page. In the next video, I'll show you how to pass the required parameters to and communicate with our REST API to get data for a specific page and return the result to the Blazor Web Assembly app. That's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions regarding the content of the videos, I'd be happy to discuss them with you in the comment sections. If you like this video, please do not forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.